If you're looking for a flashlight that can reach out to more than a thousand yards, then the Thrunite Catapult Pro may be the one you want to look at. If you're interested, keep watching. All right, just before we begin, I want to thank Thrunite for sending me the Catapult Pro so that I could share it with you. As always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light. I'll go over the physical and performance specifications as well as the modes of operation. Then, of course, we'll get outside and do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the Catapult Pro, I thought I'd share with you what it came with. So the light arrived in this box from Thrunite. Inside of the box are some of the usual things, including the manual with warranty information, a USB Type-C charging cable, a small Ziploc bag that has a few spare things in it, like spare O-rings, two of them, two spare battery port covers, a spear on off button silicone piece for the inside. It does have a tiny split ring inside right here and that's an addition or an option for installing the lanyard and it comes with this holster which isn't bad at all. It's not a super heavy duty holster but it is sufficient to the task and it will work for holding the flashlight on your belt because let's face it this is not an EDC light uh, by any means. It's also not a bad way to store the light when you put it away just uh, give it a little, a little extra protection from damage. Put that away. The other thing I just want to show is the fact that it does come with this lanyard which I have chosen to install and I'll explain why in a few moments time and the last thing is installed in the light is a 5000 milliamp hour 26650 lithium ion rechargeable battery. All right, let's just take a, a moment to talk about its key features. And the one that stands out for me is the range. This is a throwing flashlight. This is used for searching for things at long distances. I could see using this in search and rescue. We'll talk more about its application in a few minutes because it will cast a beam, a tight central white beam out to 11 100 yards, 1,005 meters, over a kilometer. That's just amazing. And you'll see when we get outside just how powerful a search like this can be. All right, let's go over the physical specifications for the light. Overall length, 5.9 inches or 150.5 millimeters. Diameter at the basal is 2.56 inches or 65 millimeters. Diameter of the tube is 1.32 inches or 33.5 millimeters. The weight with the battery installed is 11 ounces or 312 grams. It does have an impact resistance rating of 1.5 meters and a waterproof rating of IPX8. All right, let's go over the performance specifications for the Catapult Pro. So to start with, let's go to the top. Turbo, 2,713 lumens. And while that's impressive by itself, what's even more impressive, at least to me, is the fact that that will run for nine minutes straight before it drops down to 961 lumens, which will last for another 90 minutes. It does have that max distance and turbo of 1,005 meters with a candela of 252,500. It has an infinity, infinity ramping system, which we'll talk more about in a moment. So it really, I can only give you two levels to that for measurements. So at infinity high, it'll come in at 1,482 lumens, which will last for 24 minutes, another impressive amount of time. And then it will drop down to 909 lumens, where it'll last for another 120 minutes. Take it all the way down to infinity low. It has a lumen setting of 42 and will last for 53 hours. It does have a firefly setting of 0.7 lumens lasting for 42 days. And it does have a strobe of 766 lumens or 776 lumens lasting for three hours. All right, let's go through the operation of the Catapult Pro. So everything is done from the on-off switch here. Simple on, simple off. Now, if I turn the light on and press and hold the button, the lumens will change through infinity wrapping, which is to say it will slowly work its way up to the highest lumen setting, flash three times to let you know it has arrived, and press it again. It'll work its way down to the lowest lumen setting, flash three times to let you know that it's arrived there. So we'll turn the light on. I'll press and hold the button, and the light has now reached the top. Immediately it starts working its way down to the lowest lumen setting and again tells me it's arrived there. Now I'm going to start working its way back up just a small way, turn the light off, 
turn it back on just to show you that the light does have memory for the last lumen setting. Now, at any point that I want to turn to, or turn on turbo, I can do it with the light on or the light off by double pressing the on-off switch. It moves right into turbo. Now, if I want to access the strobe, either while the light is on or the light is off, I triple press the switch. Now, if I want to access Firefly, I long press the button while the light is off. And you can see the LED is illuminated. Not a lot of light, but of course, that's what's nice about Firefly. Just enough light for some functions. Now, if I want to lock the light against accidental turning it on while it's in Firefly mode, long press the button. The light will turn off and now it's locked out from turning on again. Uh, to turn, deactivate the lockout, long press the button, and the light will come back on in Firefly mode. Now, of course, as an option, if you wanted to, you could just turn the tube of the flashlight a little bit to disengage the battery from the light itself. Having gone over the physical and performance specifications as well as the modes of operation for the Through Night Catapult Pro, there's only one thing left to do. Let's get outside and do some testing. Doing some nighttime testing of the Through Night Catapult Pro. I'm in a sports field not far from my home. This is rather large. There's three or four baseball diamonds plus a soccer field. Just to give you an idea of how large it is, I'm going to start the light off. I'll take it down to infinity low first. It'll flash when it gets down to infinity low. There we go. Now, I'm casting the light across the field to a boat. 100, 150 meters. I can see it touching the trees, but I don't think that's going to pick up on the light. By the way, the lights that you can see to the right half of the screen is in an apartment building roughly 800 meters away. So I'm going to run it up now to infinity high. It'll flash when it reaches infinity high. There. Now, 150 meters away. I can see very clearly the tree line, the fence on the other side of the field, the soccer field. I'm going to move the camera a little bit around to the apartment building. I am not don't want to dwell there. This light is picking up a structure on top of the apartment building, 800 meters away, and lighting it up like daylight. Now, what if I can get it up to turbo? There we go, turbo. Absolute daylight as far as this light will reach out, I can see clearly. All right, let's see if we can wrap this video up with a few closing thoughts for the Through Night Catapult Pro. All right, so just before we talk about the pros and cons, let's talk about who this light is intended for. So while I think it is primarily uh, best used by people for search and rescue who are looking for a light that is light enough to carry with them, yet still reach out for good distances, I think this light can also be for anyone who wants to use a light that they can use in the woods or elsewhere for searching things at long distances. So it's a good versatile light that way. I don't know that it makes a great camp light and because of the weight and size of it. It's certainly not an EDC light and I'm not sure it's something I would carry around the camp because I really don't have a need at the camp for long distance uh, beam casts. However, there are a lot of uh, situations where I can see this would be especially useful. Now, Let's go into the pros and cons for this light. What do I really like? Well, it is that long beam cast of over a thousand meters. This light reaches out a long ways. Equally impressive is the fact that it will do so for nine minutes before it starts to step down. I like that it has that central white hotspot that helps identify things at those long distances. At the same time, it still has sufficient amount of spill to either side to allow you to pick things up and see those as well. One more thing. I like about it is the fact that I can use this with my gloves on. Now, there are a few cons as well as pros that I need to mention. So to start with, it is that button. I find the button a little bit difficult to find when I have the light in my hands and I'm not looking at it. So it takes a bit of time for me to rotate this light around to find where the button is. I would like to see it raised a bit more off of the barrel of the light just to make it a little bit easier to index without looking at it. Now, here's another thing while we're talking about the placement of the switch itself. If you notice, it's about halfway down the barrel of the light. Uh, that may not seem like a big deal, but it's a bit unnatural for me when I grab the light. So if I wrap my hand around the light and put my thumb where I think it should go, 
I'm way off of the switch. Can you see the switch there? My thumb would want to land up here. The switch is way down here. Now I can move my hand down and get used to having it there. And of course you're going to have to if you want to do it that way. But when I get my hand into that position, the light is starting to creep forward. So the bounce is starting to go forward on the light. And that is the reason why I put the lanyard on either way you want to wrap the lanyard on. Because it's this far forward in my hand, I just have a slight fear that I may drop it a little easier than if I was grabbing it at the full length of the barrel. So having that lanyard gives me a little bit extra sense of security. Now, one thing I did discover about using the light with the switch here is that I can use it with the center finger of my hand. So I can either use it in reverse grip, my finger lands perfectly on the button right here or I can use it in forward grip and again underneath like this with the button my finger lands on the button right here. I guess those are probably my personal opinions on the on off switch. They're not deal breakers. They're just things to be aware of and if through I could just make it a little bit better my recommendation is move the button forward a little bit more make it stand out a little bit more. So again those are not deal breakers just things that you should be aware of before purchasing this light. Now of course I'm going to be putting all the information I have given you already in the video description below as well as links to where you can purchase this light. If you have any comments or questions please put those in the comments section below. But until next time get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.